Feature flags, also known as feature toggles, are very powerful tools that allow you to control multiple features in your software at runtime, giving you the flexibility to enable disable a feature on production without the need for a new deployment. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of configuring feature flags in your .NET application. I will also show you how to leverage the Azure app configuration to manage your settings and to control your features at runtime. So let's get started. Let's start by creating an Azure app configuration. So go to Azure, your app configuration, click on create. I'm gonna use a new resource group. So RG feature flags. And I'm gonna make it in a closed location for me, North Europe. And we need to name it app CS as app configuration store dash feature flags YouTube pricing tier. I'm going to use the free pricing tier and I'm going to keep everything as it is. So validation complete. Let's create. It will take a few seconds to complete. So in that time, we can jump into Rider to start our coding. So I have here an empty solution. Let's start by adding a new project and going to add an empty API project. I'm going to call it API. Create. Let's say API. Nothing in it. It's an empty API. So first, let's install a few NuGet packages. So the first one is Microsoft.Azure.AppConfiguration.ASP.NetCore. This is the one. Let's install it. This package will allow us to do something like this one. Builder.Configuration.Azure.AppConfiguration. Add Azure app configuration. So to configure our API to work with Azure app configuration, we need to install that package and this extension method will be there and it will accept a connection string. So to get the connection string, we can do var connection string equal builder dot configuration dot get connection string and let's call it app config. And then you can use the connection string here to configure it. Note that we need now to go to the app settings and create a new section here, connection string. And inside of it, we need to have app config. And here we need to put the connection string of the app configuration store that we just created. So if we go to Azure, the deployment is completed. We can go to the resource and to get the connection string, you can scroll down here under settings, access settings, and you can copy the connection string from here. Copy. Now go back to Rider, put it here inside the app settings.json. And now we can get the connection string and use it to add the Azure app configuration. It's a good practice to keep your connection string in a secure place, not in your app settings. So you can perform a connection to a key vault. And I have a video, I will put it somewhere here. I have a video on how to configure your .NET application with Azure key vault. But for this video, it's fine. We can start in the app settings and read it to connect to the Azure app configuration. Let's go back to Azure and let's try to add a new configuration just so we can test. So in configuration explorer under operations, you can create and I'm going to create a key value configuration. So for the key, I'm going to name it API version. And the version it is 1.0.0. So if you share your app configuration with multiple applications, you need to put some prefix for your configuration so you can use them in different applications. So that's why I'm using API here. And in the code, I'm going to select all the configuration related to this configuration. So API version, and this is a version and we can apply. So once we create the version here, we can go back to the code and we can First, let's configure our Azure app configuration to select and load all the configuration that start with API. So to do that, let's change that to options here. We can do options dot connect to the connection string dot select and you select the key filter, which is API star. This should load all the configuration that start with this key. If you are enjoying this video, Please leave a like, subscribe, and consider joining my mailing list. It is in the description below. So since we have now a 
configuration called version, I'm going to create a new minimal API that will return that version to the user. App dot map get version. And here I'm going to inject I configuration to return new version configuration. And we can specify the config name, which is API version. Now, if we run the app, let's go to version. You will notice here it shows version 1.0.0, which is the same value as the configuration in the app configuration store on Azure. So pretty cool. We, we are now connected to the app configuration and we can use it in other stuff. But I need to do something before jumping into feature flags, which is I need to make sure that when I change something here, when I update the value, I need it to be updated automatically in my app without doing to restart. I need it to be instant at runtime. So if I change that to 1.0.1, the refresh, it will not be updated here. And to fix it, we need to configure our configuration to be dynamic. And the way to do that, go back to the code. Let's stop the app here. We can do dot configure refresh, refresh options dot register. And I need to register my key, which is API version. And I need to specify the refresh all to be true. The default refresh interval is 30 seconds and we can change it by doing something like set cache expiration and you can specify the time span. So let's say time span dot from seconds, five seconds. And now if we are on the app, we go to version, it's 1.0.1. Let's now change that, edit, let's make it 1.2, apply, go back here. So the interval is five seconds. If you go to the code, you will see here now that the value is being updated. Let's wait for it and nothing will happen. The reason is we need now to register in the services to use add Azure app configuration and in our app to use Azure app configuration. So now that will be configured. If we are on the app again, let's go to version, it's 1.0.2, let's update it again. Let's make it three, apply, go back. We need to wait a few seconds. The configuration is reloaded. If you notice here in the, in the logs, we refresh, it is 1.0.3. So that's basically it. That, this is how you can use the configuration at runtime to change your configuration. And you can use that to perform multiple things in your configuration. Now for feature flags, you can say, yeah, I can add a configuration here called, let's say, use feature A. And you go here and you use the I configuration to configure that and you do some parsing, the value, it's Boolean or not, and then you can use it to run different set of codes. But that's not how you should use feature flags. To use feature flags, let's stop the code. And first, let's install a package called Microsoft.FeatureManagement.ASP.NETCORE. This is the one. I'm going to install it. Once installed, we can now go to our Azure app configuration here. And we can say options dot use feature flags. Now we are making sure that our feature flag manager is Azure app configuration. So let's go to our services here and register the add feature flag feature management. And now we can use feature manager in our code. But before dealing with the features here, let's go to Azure. And there is a section here called Feature Manager. Inside Feature Manager, you can create a feature. So let's create a new feature flag. Feature flag is, is basically a variable. It's a binary flag, true, false. And you can use it to check if it is enabled or disabled. So enable feature flags, let's enable by default and call it Feature A. So not see the key, the config here, feature flag, this is basically what you can replicate in your code. So you can have the same feature flags running in your local host without connecting to Azure. But for now, let's 
keep it as their label. Label is a way to configure the same feature flag for multiple uh, label. You have to tag it as a label and you can filter that in your code, but for now it's fine. And there we have the fit filter that we can discuss later. Let's create our first feature flags. It is enabled now and let's go to the code. I'm going to create a new endpoint. So app dot map get I'm going to call it feature a and here I'm going to inject the I feature manager. And here I can do something like this for enabled equal await feature manager dot is enabled async and you need to specify the feature name. But before setting the feature name, I need to make sure that we have all the keys stored in a proper way. So create a new class, call it feature flags. And here we can make it a static class and we can have some constant. So public constant string feature a equal feature a. I don't like naming the feature flag here, the text, the string as name of the name of the uh, constant here, because if you change this one, like if you do a small refactor by mistake, or like you need to change something in it, it will mess up the, the actual key and you will lose that. So it's better to keep it as string and it is intended to be that string. So now we can go back here and say feature flags dot feature a. So we can get if it is enabled and then we can do something like if it's enabled return results dot ok feature equal to a and if it is not we can return not found maybe something like that. And now if we run the code and we query feature A, we will get the feature A, which is a response that is only when it is enabled. And now if we go and disable it on Azure, go back here, same thing at the configuration, the default settings, the default expiry for the cache, it's 30 seconds. And you can do the same thing like you did here in use feature flag to configure it if you want it to be more or less. But for now, it's fine. It's 30 seconds. We can, we're can we going to wait for it a few seconds more to see the actual value if it's been updated or not. Well, yeah, directly the feature flag is being updated. Key feature A, if we go back here and we refresh, it will display undefined. So now we can use the I feature manager in our code, in our services, our repos, anything to actually check if the feature is enabled and do and perform some logic depending on that flag. But I would like to take it a step further and to actually configure a minimal API to only work if the feature flag is enabled. And to do that, I'm going to use the endpoint filter. So let's first go here and create a new class. I'm going to call it feature flag endpoint. And for this class, let me stop the code. For this class, it will implement the I endpoint filter. And let's implement the missing member here, which is invoke async. In the end, I need to return await next context. So the idea here is filter the endpoint to check using the name of the endpoint if it is a feature flag enabled or not var endpoint equal context.http context dot get endpoint so if endpoint is null return await next context then we need to get the endpoint metadata name so var endpoint name equal endpoint dot metadata dot get metadata the endpoint name metadata dot endpoint name. This is basically if you go to your, your endpoint and you specify dot with name test, this is the name that we are getting from here. Okay. So if it is not set, it is null. We need also to return. So if endpoint name is null, return. And now since we have the name, we can use the endpoint name to check if it is enabled as a feature flag. So var 
feature manager equal context dot http context dot request services dot get required service of type i feature manager and now we can perform a similar thing that we did before var enabled equal await feature manager dot is enabled async and the feature name is let's do endpoint underscore the actual endpoint name and if it is not enabled let's return results dot not found else return the actual next of the context and now let's go to program.cs create a new endpoint to app dot map get so feature b and here it's only gonna return a json which is text equal hello from b but here we are gonna add add endpoint filter and specify the feature flag endpoint as a filter and add the name which is a metadata name let's call it feature b and now go back to azure let's create a new feature flag we can call it endpoint underscore feature b let's enable it by default apply let's run the code now if we go to feature b we have hello from b the response the the normal response if we have the feature flag enabled if we disable the feature flag it's been updated let's go back here refresh it's still not yet configured let's wait for the log to be shown here notice here the flag has been updated let's refresh it's now an empty page if you go to your network you will see it is 404 not found okay pretty cool so the last thing that I want to show you is related to the feature flags, which is basically you can have a feature filter. So yeah, you create a filter, you can enable, disable, but you can also have custom filtering for that uh, feature flag. So let's say you are targeting users that are part of a group and you can add the group here and you can specify the percentage for that feature to be enabled for that group. Or maybe you need to override it by selecting uh, multiple users. For you to work with that, you need to configure your app to use AAD or intra-ID configuration authentication. And it will be very helpful to, let's say, enable a beta a page in your app only for some set of users inside your organization. Another type of filter is a time window filter where you can enable, disable that feature flag depending on a time. So you can enable in the morning, disable it at the end of the day or something. And the last one, which is you can create your custom filter and inside the code, you can configure that to work with your uh, configuration depending on the parameter that you are adding here. And that's it for me, guys. This is how you can configure and use feature flags in your .NET application. Let me know in the comment below how are you going to use feature flags and you can also check my other videos here and here and that's it till the next time bye